Hey there, deep divers. Get ready, because today... No, yeah. We're diving into hiring. Sounds fun. But we're ditching those boring old resume tips and interview tricks you've heard a million times. Yeah, we're going way deeper. We're going deep with Sylvia Ola's book of the blind leading the disengaged. Um... But we're just focusing on one chapter today. Okay. And this isn't your typical business book. Oh, no. Ola has some radical ideas about hiring that. Some of them are pretty out there. Might just make you rethink everything you thought you knew about finding great talent. It definitely made me think differently. So what I found so interesting about this book was that mm -hmm. Ola isn't just pointing out all the problems with hiring these days. Right. She's really trying to explain why things are so messed up. Yeah, like she digs into the root causes, you know? Exactly. And she also offers some really interesting solutions. I think some of those solutions are going to be really useful to our listeners. Me too. All right, so should we jump in? Let's do it. Okay, so... Ola's main argument is that companies aren't actually facing a talent shortage. Oh, this is good. They're suffering from talent blindness. Talent blindness. It's like they're so focused on resumes and job descriptions... Like those are the only things that matter. ...that they completely miss out on all the amazing potential candidates out there. Like they can't see the forest for the trees. Perfect analogy. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, think about a time when maybe you were overlooked for a job. Oh, yeah, totally. Maybe you were that hidden talent. Yeah. And this talent blindness can have huge consequences for companies. Oh, absolutely. Ola argues that companies are missing out on highly skilled and motivated individuals. Because they're too focused on what? Because they're too focused on outdated metrics and qualifications. Right. They're stuck in the past. It's like using a 20th century map to navigate a 21st century world. Love that. And here's where it gets really interesting. Okay, tell me more. Ola suggests ditching resumes entirely. Whoa, hold on. At least for entry-level roles. I'm, I can kind of see where she's coming from, but... I know it sounds extreme. Yeah. But she gives some compelling examples. Okay, I'm listening. She talks about companies like Grayston Bakery and The Body Shop. I've heard of them. They've implemented something called open hiring. Open hiring? Yeah, it's fascinating. What is that? It's where companies get rid of most of the traditional barriers to entry. So no more resumes? Not exactly. Oh. They might still look at resumes, but they don't rely on them as much. Okay, so what do they focus on instead? They focus on basic qualifications. Like what? Can you show up on time? Are you willing to work hard? Things like that. Hmm? But most importantly, they focus on the candidate's willingness to work. Interesting. It's almost like a come one, come all approach. I'm trying to picture how that would actually work in practice. Right. So what kind of impact has this open hiring thing had on those companies? Well, Grayston Bakery saw a 60% reduction in turnover wow. and a 13% boost in productivity. That's huge. They created a more stable and engaged workforce. Just by changing how they hire. It seems so. That's pretty impressive. It really shows that talent can come from anywhere. And that maybe... We've been looking for it in all the wrong places. Maybe so. So Ola is pretty critical of traditional hiring practices. Oh, yeah. She doesn't hold back. She really goes after those generic interview questions we all hate. You know the ones I'm talking about? Like, where do you see yourself in five years? <sighs> that one. Or what's your greatest weakness? Please make it stop. Right. Those are so outdated and pointless. She wants to banish those questions forever. Yes, please. And replace them with questions that actually provide insight into a candidate's potential. So instead of asking about some imaginary future five years down the road. Yeah, it's so vague. What does she suggest we ask instead? She says to frame questions around the company's existing development programs. Okay. And ask how those align with the candidate's career aspirations. So it's about understanding their goals and how those goals fit with what the company can actually offer. Right. That's way more concrete and relevant than just asking about their dream job. And it shows the candidate that you're actually invested in their development. And that you're not just trying to fill a seat. Exactly. Ola also has some interesting thoughts on how to handle questions about previous work experience. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Instead of focusing on why someone left a job. Which could be for a million different reasons. Totally. She recommends asking questions like, what did you love most about your previous work? Or what skills did you find yourself picking up faster than others? I like that. It's a much more positive and strengths-based approach. It's about understanding what motivates the candidate. Right, and highlighting their natural talent. Instead of dwelling on the negative. Exactly. Okay, so this next part is a little bit funny. Oh, I know it's coming. But also kind of cringeworthy. Yeah. Ola gets brutally honest about the types of people you should never hire. She doesn't mince words. 
And she uses some hilarious examples to get her point across. This is my favorite part. She talks about the people who fumble at the checkout line. You know the ones. The ones who hold up the entire queue while they search for their transit pass. No, those people. Basically, anyone who demonstrates a lack of basic consideration for others. Like, they have zero social awareness. It sounds funny, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Oh, totally. She's not just talking about being polite. Right. She's highlighting the importance of social awareness mm. as a key indicator of how someone will function in a team environment. It's about being able to anticipate the needs of others. Respecting boundaries. And contributing to a positive and productive work environment. These are essential qualities for any employee. Regardless of their role. I'm definitely going to be paying more attention to people's checkout etiquette from now on. Me too. So let's move on to another key concept from Ola's book. Okay. The right people, right place, right time principle. This is so important. This idea seems to be at the heart of her whole philosophy on hiring. It really is. So can you break it down for us? Absolutely. Okay. What does it mean to find the right people? The right people part is about more than just skills and personality. Oh. It's also about understanding the individual's preferred work style. Like, do they like to work independently or as part of a team? Why is X? Or do they prefer a structured environment or a more flexible one? Right. What about the right role? Right role is about making sure the candidate's skills and experience align with the job requirements. But Ola takes it a step further. Yeah, so. She suggests looking beyond past performance and focusing on repeated success. Interesting. This means looking for patterns of behavior that suggest the candidate has consistently excelled in similar roles. I see. So it's about looking for evidence of their competence. Not just taking their word for it. And finally, we have the right time element. This one's a bit more nuanced. How so? It acknowledges that personal circumstances play a huge role in whether or not a job is a good fit. Like what kind of circumstances? Things like life events, career stage, even the overall stability of the company. Right, because all of those things can impact a candidate's ability to thrive in a particular role. Exactly. So it's not just about the company finding the right candidate. It's also about the candidate finding the right company. At the right time. Precisely. So we've talked a lot about how companies can improve their hiring practices. We have. But what about the job seekers out there? Yeah, what advice does Ola have for them? Are there any red flags they should watch out for during the hiring process? Oh, absolutely. There are tons. Okay, hit me with them. I'm sure our listeners have encountered some of these firsthand. So red flag number one. Okay. If you have to create an account and re-enter all the information from your resume. Oh, that's the worst. That's a major red flag. It's such a waste of time. It shows a complete lack of respect for the candidate's time. Like they don't even care. And it just screams inefficiency. Totally. <laughs> okay, red flag number two. Hit me. System generated rejection emails. The worst. Especially if you get one immediately after applying. Oh, yeah, like within seconds. It's like they didn't even look at your application. It makes you feel so disposable. It suggests that the company is relying too heavily on automated systems. And not actually considering individual candidates. Right. It's like being screened by a robot. So impersonal. <laughs> okay. Ready for red flag number three? I think so. Endless rounds of interviews. Oh, no. Or excessive homework assignments. Ooh, I hate those. It's like they're trying to make you jump through hoops. Yeah, and it can be a sign that they're disorganized or indecisive. So that they don't really know what they're looking for. That's a huge red flag. And, of course, the ultimate red flag. I bet I know what this is. Ghosting. Yep. If a company goes silent after a face-to-face -face interaction. It's the worst. That's just plain rude. It shows a complete lack of respect for the candidate. And their time and effort, it's just bad manners. Okay, so we've talked about red flags for job seekers. Right. But what about the hiring managers? Yeah, what insights does Ola offer for them? Well, she says the hiring process shouldn't be about weeding people out. Or finding reasons to say no. Exactly. It should be about what? It should be about uncovering potential. Mm. Seeing the whole person. I like that. And recognizing that sometimes the best fit comes from the most unexpected places. So be open to possibilities. Don't try to force candidates into a pre-existing box. Right, because people are complex. And their skills and experiences don't always fit neatly into categories. Ola also challenges hiring managers to think outside the traditional resume and interview box. I like where this is going. She suggests exploring alternative methods for assessing candidates. Like what? Things like skills-based tests. 
mm. portfolio reviews. Makes sense. Or even trial periods where candidates can demonstrate their abilities in a real-world setting. That's a great idea. It's about giving candidates a chance to show what they can do. Instead of just telling you about it. Ola also has some strong opinions about traditional reference checks. Oh yeah, she's not a fan. Why not? She argues that they're often a waste of time. Really? Because they rely on potentially biased opinions from past employers. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Instead, she recommends conducting thorough and well-structured interviews. So focus on the interview. And make sure you're asking the right questions. Questions that reveal the candidate's patterns of behavior and repeated success. It's about getting a sense of their actual track record. Not just relying on hearsay from previous employers. Right. Ola even suggests using Bloom's taxonomy to structure interview questions. Bloom's taxonomy? Yeah. It's a framework typically used in education. Oh, okay. But she thinks it can also be applied to hiring. How so? Well, Bloom's taxonomy is essentially a hierarchy of learning objectives. Okay. Ranging from basic recall to higher order thinking skills. Like analysis and evaluation. So how does that apply to hiring? Ola suggests that hiring managers can use this framework to craft interview questions that target specific skills. I see. And assess a candidate's ability to think critically and solve problems. It's a way to go beyond those surface level questions. And really get a sense of the candidate's cognitive abilities. I like that. Now, Ola doesn't shy away from calling out the hiring mess that exists in many organizations. Nope. She tells it like it is. What are some of the things she criticizes? Well, she's critical of the overemphasis on speed and quantity over quality. So it's like they're just trying to fill seats. Exactly. Without really considering if it's the right fit. Which often leads to hiring managers settling for good enough candidates. Instead of holding out for the best possible fit. Right. She also criticizes incompetent hiring managers. Oh, yeah. She goes there. What does she say about them? She says they conduct unstructured, irrelevant interviews. They ghost candidates. Oh, rude. And generally make the hiring process a nightmare. For everyone involved. She argues that effective hiring is a unique skill. It's not something that just anyone can do. And that it needs to be nurtured and developed within organizations. So hiring managers need training. Just like any other role. Ola emphasizes that hiring isn't just about filling positions. It's about building a team. A strong and thriving team. That will drive the company's success. It's a long-term investment. Not just a quick fix. Now, one thing that really stood out to me in Ola's book was her focus on the candidate experience. Oh, yeah, this is so important. She argues that creating a positive and respectful candidate experience is essential. For attracting and retaining top talent. It's also just the right thing to do. The hiring process is often the first impression a potential employee has of the company. Right. So it's crucial to make a good impression. If it's a negative experience, it can really damage the company's reputation. Even if they end up getting the job. Exactly. So it's not just about finding the right candidate for the company. It's also about making sure the company is the right fit for the candidate. It's a two-way street. Ola encourages companies to think about the hiring process from the candidate's perspective. Okay, how do we do that? Make it as smooth, transparent, and engaging as possible. I like that. This means providing clear timelines. Okay. Communicating regularly. Yeah. Offering feedback throughout the process. That's helpful. And generally treating candidates with respect and dignity. Like human beings. Right. Ola goes on to offer some very specific and actionable tips for improving the hiring process. Both for candidates and companies. So let's dive into those. Okay, let's do it. What's her advice for job seekers? Well, first and foremost, she says to be hyper aware of those red flags we talked about earlier. Right, those are deal breakers. If a company is disorganized, disrespectful, or gives you a bad feeling. Trust your gut. Don't waste your time on a company that doesn't value you. You have options. And you deserve to work for a company that treats you well. And what about companies? What advice does she have for them? She stresses the importance of streamlining the hiring process. Okay. Don't drag candidates through endless rounds of interviews. Keep it concise. And make sure you're communicating clearly and consistently. That makes a big difference. It's about being respectful of the candidate's time. And making the process as efficient as possible. Exactly. She also encourages companies to create a detailed job description. That accurately reflects the role and responsibilities. Don't try to sugarcoat things. Honesty and transparency are key. Candidates will appreciate that. And finally, she emphasizes the importance of training and developing your hiring managers. This is so important. Make sure they're equipped with the skills and knowledge they need to conduct effective interviews. Because hiring is a crucial function. 
It shouldn't be left to chance. Investing in your hiring process is an investment in the future of your company. Now, Ola goes on to share some really insightful strategies for identifying and attracting top talent. Okay, I'm all ears. One of her key recommendations is to look beyond the resume and focus on a candidate's potential and transferable skills. So don't get hung up on the specific bullet points. Right, because talent can come from unexpected places. And sometimes the best fit for a role is someone who brings a fresh perspective. And a diverse skill set. She encourages hiring managers to think outside the box. And consider candidates who might not have the traditional experience. Or possess the aptitude and willingness to learn. It's about looking for potential rather than just checking boxes. I like that. Ola also emphasizes the importance of building a strong employer brand. This is something we hear a lot about these days. What does that actually mean? It means showcasing your company culture, values, and mission in a way that resonates with potential candidates. So it's about attracting the right kind of talent. The people who will thrive in your company's environment. Be authentic, be transparent, and let your personality shine through. I think that's really important. People want to work for companies that they connect with on a deeper level. That's right. She also encourages companies to use a variety of recruitment channels. Like what? Things like online job boards, social media employee referrals, and even industry events. Don't be afraid to get creative. And think outside the traditional recruitment box. Cast a wide net. Exactly. Now let's talk about interviews. One of the most important parts of the hiring process. Ola delves into some really specific tips for conducting effective interviews. Okay, I'm Ren. She advises focusing on behavioral questions. What are those? Behavioral questions are questions that reveal a candidate's past experiences. Okay. And how they've handled specific situations. So it's about getting concrete examples, exactly. not just hypothetical scenarios. Uh -huh. For example, instead of asking, are you a team player? Which is such a cliche question. Asked, tell me about a time when you had to work as part of a team to achieve a common goal. That's much better. This type of question encourages candidates to provide specific examples and gives you a better understanding of their actual behavior rather than relying on generalizations. She also emphasizes the importance of active listening during interviews. Oh, yeah, this is so important. Don't just go through a list of questions. Right. Really listen to the candidate's answers and what they're saying and ask follow up questions to dig deeper. It's about engaging in a genuine conversation. And getting to know the person behind the resume. Ola also encourages interviewers to be mindful of their own biases. That's a good point. And to create a welcoming and inclusive environment for all candidates. Because everyone deserves to be treated with respect. This means avoiding discriminatory language or questions. Right. And ensuring that everyone feels comfortable and respected throughout the process. It's about creating a level playing field. Exactly. Now let's talk about one of Ola's more controversial suggestions. I'm intrigued. Ditching the CV. Whoa. At least for certain roles. I mean, I can see how that would be controversial. But she makes a compelling case for it. So what's her reasoning? Well, she argues that CVs can be limiting. Especially for entry-level roles. Where candidates might not have a lot of work experience to showcase. Right. They can also be biased. Favoring those with traditional career paths and overlooking individuals with unique skills and experiences. It's like saying that a piece of paper can't possibly capture the full complexity of a person. Exactly. So what does she suggest we do instead? She suggests exploring alternative methods for assessing candidates. Okay, like what? Things like skills-based tests, portfolio reviews, or even trial periods. That makes sense. This allows candidates to demonstrate their abilities and potential. Instead of relying on a static document. She highlights the success of companies like Grayston Bakery and The Body Shop. We talked about them earlier. Right. They've implemented open hiring practices. That focus on basic qualifications and willingness to work. Rather than traditional screening methods. And they've seen some pretty impressive results. Increased productivity, reduced turnover, and a more diverse and engaged workforce. It's pretty compelling evidence that ditching the CV can actually lead to positive outcomes. Now let's talk about onboarding. The often overlooked final stage of the hiring process. Ola stresses the importance of creating a smooth and welcoming onboarding experience for new hires. This is so important. Why have that? Because it sets the tone for their entire employment journey. I see. And it can make a huge difference in their engagement and retention. So it's worth investing in. Absolutely. What are some of her recommendations for onboarding? Well, she advises having a structured onboarding program okay. that covers everything from company policies and procedures to 
team introductions, and role expectations. It's about giving them all the information they need. And making sure they feel welcomed and supported. And equipped to succeed. Right. She also emphasizes the importance of ongoing feedback and check-ins during the onboarding process. Don't just leave them to figure things out on their own. Right, check in with them regularly. Make sure they feel comfortable asking questions. And getting the support they need. It's about creating a culture of support and mentorship. From the very beginning. Now, Ola dives into some really interesting insights about the relationship between hiring practices and company culture. Okay, I'm curious to hear this. She argues that the way you hire is a direct reflection of how you treat your employees. That makes sense. If you're disrespectful, disorganized, or dishonest during the hiring process. It's a pretty good indicator of how you'll treat your employees once they're on board. Exactly. It's all about consistency. She encourages companies to think about the message they're sending to potential candidates. Through their hiring practices. Are you showcasing your company culture and values? Are you treating candidates with respect and dignity? Are you making the process as smooth and efficient as possible? These are all important considerations. That can impact your ability to attract and retain top talent. Now let's talk about one of the biggest challenges facing companies today. Finding and retaining skilled employees. Ola believes that many companies are making this problem worse. How so? By focusing on the wrong things. They're so fixated on finding candidates with the perfect skills and experience. That they overlook individuals with potential and transferable skills. It's like they're looking for a unicorn instead of recognizing the talent that's right in front of them. She encourages companies to broaden their search okay. and consider candidates from non-traditional backgrounds or with different career paths. Be more open-minded. She also stresses the importance of investing in training and development. For existing employees. To upskill them and create a pipeline of future talent. It's about creating a culture of continuous learning. And recognizing that potential is often more valuable than experience. Now let's talk about the candidate experience again. Okay. Ola believes that creating a positive candidate experience is essential. For attracting and retaining top talent. It's also just a matter of basic respect and professionalism. She advises companies to think about the hiring process from the candidate's perspective. Okay. And to make it as smooth, transparent, and engaging as possible. We've talked about this before. But it's worth repeating. This means providing clear timelines, communicating regularly, and offering feedback throughout the process. Keep candidates informed. She also encourages companies to personalize the experience. Don't just send out generic emails. Or rely on automated systems. Make the time to get to know each candidate. And make them feel valued. It's about treating candidates like human beings. Not just cogs in a machine. Exactly. Now, I think we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. And I know this is a lot to take in. It's a lot of information. But I want to emphasize that Ola's book isn't just about pointing out the flaws in our current hiring system. It's about offering solutions. Practical solutions. That both job seekers and companies can use. To create a more effective and humane hiring experience. It's about creating a win-win situation for everyone. Right, where both the company and the candidate feel good about the outcome. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Sylvia Ola's hiring insights. What are some of the key takeaways our listeners should really remember? You know, there's so much great information in this book. I know, right? It's hard to pick just a few things. But if you had to choose one, hmm. what would it be? I think the most impactful idea is this. Okay. How a company hires is a direct reflection of how they treat their employees. That's so powerful. And we've touched on this throughout our conversation today. We have. Think about it. Okay. The hiring process is often the first impression a potential employee has of a company. That's true. So if it's disorganized, disrespectful, or just plain weird, yeah. what does that tell you about the company's culture? It's a huge red flag. It suggests they don't really care about their people. Or their experience. Right. On the other hand, if the hiring process is thoughtful, efficient, and transparent, mm. that sets the stage for a much more positive employee experience. It shows that the company values its people and wants them to succeed. Ola's insights really challenge us to think differently about hiring. It's not just about filling positions. Right. It's about building a team. A team that's aligned with the company's values and goals. It's about creating a culture where people feel valued, respected, and empowered to do their best work. Now, Ola has some great advice for job seekers, too. Yeah, she doesn't just focus on the companies. What are some of the things job seekers should keep in mind? As they're going through the hiring process. Well, first and foremost, trust your gut. Hmm. If a company gives you a bad feeling during the hiring process, yeah. 
it's probably a sign to move on. Don't ignore those red flags. They're usually there for a reason. It's like dating. Uh, I like that analogy. You wouldn't ignore red flags at a potential partner. Right. So why ignore them in a potential employer? You deserve to be with someone who treats you well. Exactly. And that goes for employers, too. Absolutely. So let's end this deep dive with a final thought-provoking question for our listeners. Okay, what is it? The source argues that the way a company hires is a direct reflection of their overall culture and values. That's a big statement. <laughs> you agree. Think about your own experiences. Both as a job seeker and as someone involved in hiring. What are the things that stand out to you? What would you like to see changed? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. By being more aware of these common pitfalls. And shifting our mindset. We can all contribute to a more effective and humane hiring experience for everyone. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into the fascinating world of hiring. We covered a lot today. We did. I hope you found it helpful. We hope you enjoyed the journey. Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep diving deep.